it's absolutely beautiful here today. I've just popped on to Woodby South Forest in particular, near Crown Hill, which is a an area of mature oak on Budby. The rest of it is heathland. Lots of other oaks, but they're still some way behind their mature cousins on Crown Hill here. And there's some warmth in that sun. Beautifully warm. There's a light breeze, but altogether it's a very pleasant picture with the remaining leaves on the oaks around here now being a beautiful gold and continuing the lovely autumn that we've experienced here at least in this part of Nottinghamshire this year. But as I sit here I'm inclined to think back and reminisce and one particular invertebrate comes straight to mind from this particular spot where I'm sat and it was underneath a log. It was an invertebrate that is immensely common, it's probably in everybody's gardens, and yet it provided Dillis and myself with a unique opportunity and some unique photographs. Well, the species I'm thinking of today, and has come to mind as I sit here on Budby, is Lithobius forficartus, in UK terms, a large and impressive Lithobius centipede. It's very common, most people will have seen it at some time, and it probably occurs in everybody's garden, in Nottinghamshire at least. It is, without a doubt, our commonest species. And there's one that used to occur here regularly, but one particular site in an event springs to mind as I sit here now on this part of Woodby. And in the early part of 2013, Dillis and I were on here for one of our customary walks looking for something or other. And typically at the time we lifted most logs that we came across. And underneath one particular log here, we found two Lithobius centipedes, nothing particularly unusual in that. But what these were doing and what these two were up to was indeed very unusual and it's something only ever seen the once. We never saw it again and I've not seen it since. Luckily, I had a camera on me to briefly get some photographs of the event in question. And on first lifting, the, if I remember right, it was a burnt log that was laid here. Nothing particularly unusual at first, but I noticed that these two centipedes were being particularly, how should we say, reluctant to move from one particular spot. And there was, on closer inspection, a small bit of webbing. Now, you may not think that centipedes can produce web, but some species certainly can, and Lithobius forficatus is one such species. And that web is produced by the male, I believe by the male only. And there is a purpose in the male constructing a small sheet of very fine silk, and that is to deposit his sperm on, onto it. That sperm is then gathered up by the female and can be held by the female for many months before being used or it could be used on and off throughout that female's lifetime but on being uncovered and caught in the act so to speak one did a runner quite quickly i can't remember whether it was the male or the female but one stayed and wouldn't move from being sat over this web it eventually did move but I eventually got some photographs and the photographs that you're looking at now show this Lithobius forficatus originally you can see that it is just sat there or stood there but at the back end towards the back end you'll be able to see that there is a small section or web of silk on closer inspection and from a side view we can then see that 
there is something white and globular on that silk. At the time, we had no idea what it was. And it was only on reading up about the mating habits or a, the exchange of sperm amongst Lithobius centipedes that we realised that the photos we'd got were something quite special on an internet search revealed nothing similar. I've still not seen anything similar to this day, although it has been documented. But in terms of actual photos, I've yet to see one of a wild Lithobius forficatus doing what we captured it doing. As I mentioned, one centipede promptly run off quite quickly, but the other one stayed to defend its prize, and that prize was the deposit of sperm by the male. And I still believe that it's the male that's in these photographs. Maybe someone could suggest otherwise. But eventually, after becoming rather flighty and wanting to get away, we caught this. This is the act of the centipede gathering up what it could of the precious sperm, held it under the head in between the poison claws and first legs, if I remember right, going from memory, and then eventually did move off, complete with its attachment of sperm, hopefully at a later date or once calmness had resumed, the transfer of sperm to the female was successful. It's the only time I've ever seen that web, although there are often a number of webs if you turn up any sort of log or stone you may well see tiny webs made by a line if it's spiders but the webs aren't up to much but they do the job and at the end of it all Dillis and I had some unique photographs and that's the memory that's come back as I sit here today never seen it since I would love to see it again and perhaps catch it on video or in more detail on still images and as far as I know nobody else has seen it at least not in the UK and not in the wild I've not come across any literature documenting the such so as I sit here now reminiscing about that particular day and that unique opportunity that Dillis and I accidentally came across it brings back some really nice memories and one of those events where even the most commonest of invertebrates could provide something of interest. And it's surprising how often that occurs, but in the terms of centipedes, never seen it before, never seen it again. Maybe one day it will happen to come across the same event. And it's an event that still sticks in my mind every time I'll drive past Pugby.